many people in the United States and Latin America have grown up celebrating the anniversary of Christopher Columbus's voyage. But was he an intrepid explorer who brought two worlds together? Or a ruthless exploiter who brought colonialism and slavery? And did he even discover America at all? It's time to put Columbus on the stand. Hello everyone, welcome once again. My name is Logan and this is Decode Your Reality. Today I'm going to be breaking down and decoding the man who supposedly discovered America, which we celebrate on Columbus Day, Mr. Christopher Columbus Decoded. And of course, folks, this has to do with history. I've been following the research, I've been putting out the discoveries, you know, history equals the number 23 in numerology, which is a match to the word crown and blood. It's the royal star of the lion in numerology, which is why LeBron James and Michael Jordan wears it in sports. But folks, we're going to break this down. And what I'm here to show you again is that the game of life is completely rigged. It is completely and emphatically fixed. To what degree? I don't know. I don't know to what degree that it's fixed, but I know in correlation to the numbers and the mystical arts and all the research I've been doing over all these years, the game of life is fixed. Man's not really doing anything so that little voice in the back of your head that's talking right now, how are you to prove that you're in control of it? You can't. I can't prove that it is in control of you, but yet you cannot prove that you are in control of it. But the numbers and the mystical arts and all these platforms I use, they tell their own story and narrative, which is why I say the game of life is fixed. So here we go, folks. Here we go. We're going to use dates and numbers and what we've been told. That's all I can go off of. And is this a big conspiracy? Do you realize the amount of people that would have to be in on something like this to have all these outcomes I'm going to show you be linked up? Do you realize? Just use your common sense and logic as I go through this presentation and, and ask yourself, you know, all the people that are involved, could they all be in cahoots together to make this outcome and all these outcomes come into play and all tie it together? Just, just keep that in mind as we go through this. Okay? So Columbus Day is on always October 12th. And it's the anniversary of Mr. Columbus arriving in the Americas in the year 1492. And we're going to decode that as well. Why the year 1492? Well, I want you to notice and focus upon the card in the center of your screen. The 10 clubs card. 10 is the number of the binary. In quantum physics, folks, there are, I mean, I'm sorry, in, in quantum physics, in the binary system, there are only zeros and ones. That's it. There is no two, three, four, five. It's just zeros and ones. 10 is the androgynous number because the zero means feminine and the masculine is the one. So it's an androgynous number. And remember, you know, if you study theology, the ancient Israelite God of the Bible, the yod heh vah is starts off with the letter Y, which is the 10th letter in the Hebrew alphabet and the Aramaic and the Sanskrit, I mean, it goes on and on. But nonetheless, how did I get to this? Let me digress and show you the chart. Okay, how did I get, why, how is the 10 clubs card tied to this date? Well, I'm going to show you folks. Go to this boilerplate chart right here. Here it is. Now, the cards of illumination is what they're called. They go by many names. I call them the cards of illumination. 
There are 52 cards in a deck. Now, maybe you've never decoded reality with the cards, but perhaps you might want to start doing that to get another vantage point other than numerology or what people like to say, Dramatria. Because that's a dead end. You see, folks, there are 12 months, and then here are the 31 days running vertically. This is the boiler plate chart of the cards of illumination. Now, your birthday's in here, and, you know, October... 12th is the 10 clubs card right there. Here's the 12th line, October. That's the day that we were told Christopher Columbus discovered America in the year 1492. These cards are highly accurate. Why are they accurate, folks? Because as I've been seeing, is there are 52 cards in a deck, a typical poker deck or blackjack deck, 52 cards matching the 52 weeks in a year. There are four suits matching the four seasons in nature. 13 cards per suit matching the 13 weeks per season, also matching the lunar cycle phases. So these are highly accurate if you tie them into numerology and your name and high decoding yourself. Extremely accurate, folks. So there is the 23rd card in the deck, the October 12th card. And let me digress and show you that, just so you know. Here is the natural lineages of these cards. These are the four suits, hearts, clubs, diamonds, and spades. That's how they go. And there are 13 cards per suit. And they're all numbered. They go all the way up to 52, 53, including the joker. If you have two jokers, it would be the zero and the 53. But nonetheless, here it is. The 23rd card in the deck, the October 12th card, is the 10 clubs card. If you want these graphics, by the way, just send me an email and I'll send them to you. My email is decodeyourreality at gmail. I don't want anything from you, just pay it forward. Decode, give me some nuggets. So there you have it right there, folks. The October 12th card, Christopher Columbus discovering America and the day we celebrate Columbus Day is tied to the 10 clubs card. Now, if you've been following my research, you should automatically be raising your eyebrows. Maybe your jaw on the floor, because this is a big deal card. It's tied to so many big events in our lives. Matter of fact, the coronavirus, the first known case of it, falls on a day that's tied to the 10 clubs card. So notice, you know, these are the big words that match the number 23. The word blood. How, how important is your blood, folks? That's your lifeline. The crown runs that. Who's the crown? So many of you have opinions as to who the crown is, myself included. Who's the crown? Who wears the crown? They run the blood. They own your blood. And then, of course, who runs this noun right there? That's a pretty big deal word. History. 23. They're all 23s. In numerology, this is called the royal star of the lion. The lion is, in astrology, Leo, the fifth zodiac sign, matching that because 2 plus 3 is 5. What's the lion? The fullest expression of summer. Expansion. You can go into so many different layers with that. But folks, this is the very reason why I'm saying man is being used. I know it's a tough pill to swallow. It is. But folks, you know, when you finally can accept that to some degree, there will be some kind of solace in your life. Predestination comes into mind. Let's keep going. Now, the cards of illumination came, as history tells us, around the 13th or 14th century. And then after that, the tarot came into existence. So this is a cousin, as I like to say, of the tarot. Now, the tarot has more cards than the cards of illumination, but nonetheless, they match up. The clubs, which means the mind, the mental, the air suit, is the 10 clubs. This is the, I'm sorry, wands. This is the wands suit. Notice the 
Letter X in the Roman numerals. X is the X chromosome tied to male, female, right? It's the four faces of God because if you were to write out the letter X, you'll have four different positions or ending points of that letter. So it's tied to the Bible, theology as well. You know the word sex? The X is a big deal. X marks the spot. It's a big deal letter. It's the 24th letter tied to our DNA. Chromosomes. So the 10 wands is the 10 clubs. This is the 31st card in the deck. And there are many major things in our matrix reality with speaking spells that match up with the 31. Number one that comes to mind is the word London. London equals the number 31. And, you know, I mean, that should tell you everything. London believes that it's the crown, right? It's been portraying itself as the crown. But nonetheless, you can make your calculations. I decoded it so many different ways. Boaz and Yachin, I showed that in my video with that. The 31 being tied to the 23. What about the string of pi? Now, folks, you know, again, if you've been following my research, I, I want to say thank you to those of you that are following my research and asking me for my graphics and wanting to go further. And we're, we're a small group because, you see, as I do this research, I'm getting a lot of backlash. I'm getting a lot of people that are, and I only can say you're ignorant because, you see, if you don't understand or understand something, you immediately refute it. Oh, that's not true. That can't be right. I'll debate you. I'm not interested in debating anybody. You gotta prove me wrong. This is my methodology. But see, I've been I have almost a hundred videos, all the same methodology showing all the same origins, pointing to man is being used. Notice that you know the year the in the Christopher Columbus story is 1492. And, you know, let's bring pi into this. Because you see, folks, pi is the perfect measurement of a circle. You know, the circle. It's the sphere, the circle. It's so embedded in our sacred geometry. It's ridiculous. Matter of fact, the true solar lunar year is the measurement of a circle. The Gregorian calendar threw it all off. It made it kind of like wobbly, if you will. But the measurement of it a circle is only one way to measure it. You can't use multiple. Like when you use numerology, folks, let me digress. You know, obviously, most of you know, this is the site I use, dramatranerd.com, Derek's site. But you know, folks, these are all the numerology ciphers. Look at them all. Okay, this is Christopher Columbus. Look at the outcomes that we get. Now, some of them are going to match. But how are you to really decipher this or decode all of this? Because they don't all link up. And that's the problem that I have with all these ciphers. And you know, folks, most of you just decode and you're like, well, I don't know where it came. Where, where did this come from? Where did, where did this cipher come from? And this one? And these reverse ones? Where did these come from? You have no idea, yet you're using them. And I'm not saying that some of them don't have merit, but folks, build your foundation. But what really is tried and true is the string of pi. You see, this is sabidium.com. You can type in any digit, I think, up to 2 million, and it'll tell you exactly where the digits appear. There's only one way to observe this. One. And I believe it has the most merit. So there it is, folks. What is 1492 tied to in the string of pi? Here it is. It appears because it takes up four digits, because it's four digits, at the 19,915th, 16th, 17th, and 18th decimal digits of pi in the string of past the three point. So there it is right here. So these are the digits that are tied to the 1492. What happens when we add all of those up? that's what it's occupying in the string of pi the infinite amount of numbers measuring the perfect circle well let's bring in the trusty calculator to do that and real math and there it is when we add up all four digits occupying that 1492 space in the string of pi 
Look at the outcome that we get, folks. 79,666. Now, 79 is linked to the element gold. I mean, what, what element would you attribute to a huge ordeal in life of discovering land for the first time? I mean, I've struck gold. What happens when somebody is in the oil business and they find oil? I've struck gold. I found gold, the gold rush. Yeah. Finding land for the first time is like striking gold. The story now, folks. Because I wasn't there when they said this guy landed and found the America. I wasn't there. But the story in the matrix, in the layer of history, which is tied to the crown, tells us these dates. And I'm, like I said, folks, do you realize the amount of numerology and alchemy and pi would have to go into creating these dates? To have it all match up like this? It, to me, is impossible, man. Could not do it. Too many moving parts. Too many people involved. Man is being used. Like puppets on a string. I mean, let's... What is the number there? 666. And, you know, if you're past the point of it just being the number of the beast, again, congratulations. Because it just doesn't mean that. But when you tie gold to the 666, that's a big deal. I mean, it could have been any other outcome, but look at the narrative that it's showing with the numbers. To me, it's incredible. I mean, incredible. And it's all just, you know, it's just, this is a software we live in. So the software has a developer or developers, like someone creating a video game. What about when we bring in to alchemy into the 1492? And you know, this is kind of alchemology. We bring the numbers into the elements of the periodic table. 1492, 1492. He hydrogen, beryllium, fluoron, helium. Now, then we want to take up the most abundant weights of each one of these and add them up. Go to the trusty calculator. Look at the outcome that we get with this, folks. It's a triple three if you reduce it down. But on the masculine side, it's 33. Now, you know, look, again, if you're past that, it's Masonic and the Jesuit. Listen, those people are being used. It's way beyond those people. They're just pawns being used. But again, as fate would have it, the game of life is fixed, it's rigged. That's why the 33 is showing up with this date that is derived from this guy who supposedly found the Americas. I mean, you could even say it's a triple three. I could have broke this down even more. You can break it down even more, folks. I mean, you got Scandium in there, which is tied to Saturn, arsenic, the Christ, Lucifer, the 33rd element's arsenic, which is, it has an atomic mass of 74. That's tied to the crucifixion. It's tied to Lucifer. I mean, it, there's so many ways to look at it. And it's tied to the year of Christopher Columbus's arrival to the Americas. What about the actual month and day of the arrival date? Scrapping the year, October 12th. How do we write that out? 10 is the month of October and 12 is the day. Now, I mean, folks, what is the number 10 to you? Well, again, that's the Yod in the Hebrew and Aramaic. The 10th letter in the Hebrew alphabet is the Yod. It's the binary number, the male-female. COVID-19, which leads us to Isaiah 45, 7. Go study these pieces. Understand or understand the way this matrix works. The story of it. When you take and add up magnesium and neon over here to the trusty calculator, the outcome we get is 43.977. That's tied to 43 on the masculine side. That's tied to the word Maltese cross. Why am I, what does that got to do with Christopher Columbus and the discovery of the Americas and October 12th? What is, what is a Maltese cross? You know what a Maltese cross is? I hope you do. 
If not, I'm going to show it to you. What is a Maltese cross? And it's 43 and tied to the actual date, October 12th. You see, folks, the Maltese cross, if you go study your history, you'll see that the three ships that Christopher Columbus supposedly sailed on to discover the Americas had the Maltese cross on, on the actual um, sails. And there it is, the Maltese cross, which is, of course, where the cross came from. That's a Maltese cross right there. You go type in the boats of Christopher Columbus. This is the pictures you're going to see with all these Maltese crosses. It's a no-brainer. You'll see it over and over. And it's tied to the date of when he founded America. Oh, but wait, there's more. Let's go a little deeper. Why the Maltese cross? Well, thanks to my friend Paul Christopher Bogart. Thank you, Paul. You can go to this website. It's all over the place. Here is what the a light looks like. A light photon looks like. It looks like a Maltese cross. It's tied to the Merkaba. It's a light photon, folks. And I, I'm not going to get into too much science. But folks, that shape right there is of a light photon. Light! The light spectrum is tied to the Maltese cross. So do you think that these people knew science that much to put it on their sails? Perhaps, perhaps they did have the technology and they knew that the shape of a light photon wasn't the shape of a Maltese cross. But did they have the numerology back then? Maybe they did to tie it all together. But if you ask my opinion, no freaking way. No way man is being used. And you can read about it. There it is. Biz S. I -Z -Z -I -Z. I'll, I'll leave the link in the description. You can read the whole article yourself. So you can study it. So this is just not my opinion. This, this is real science. Here are the three ships that we're told that Columbus and company sailed to discover the Americas. The Santa Maria, the Nina, and the La Pinta. I mean, you know, notice it's 21. The, the small subtleties in numerology is, you know, 21 letters. That's linked to Saturn, which is Kronos, which is linked to the Yod. And, you know, the outcome is 58. The 58th element is Cerium. Notice, now it has multiple weights. If you go study this, but notice it's most abundant is 139. That 39 is linked to time travel. Yttrium, the letter Y. We're going to get into that as well. It's going to show up in this presentation. What if we bring the string of pi into this? If we go 58 digits past the three point and we add up all those digits, here's what your outcome is going to be. 288. And there's that 88, folks. There is the 88. But where does this sit in the string of pi? The 288. Well, let's go to let's go to that and type in 288 and find out where, where it's located at. And voila, folks. The 288, although it occupies three, it'd be 33, 34, and 35, it starts at the 33rd digit in the string of pi. How about that? There's that 33 once again. There it is. Okay. So there it is, tied to the 288, tied to the 58, tied to the ships that were told that discovered the Americas that Christopher Columbus and company sailed on. Tied to Syria, which if you know, I mean, you can go back and study that as well. It's the God of agriculture, the God of agriculture. Part of the Elohim, perhaps. 
And this is really what, you know, got me started in this decode. I, I, I woke up today and I'm, I wasn't even, I didn't have Christopher Columbus on my mind, but then I was looking at Mother Father again. And I don't know who inspired me to do that. But thank you anyway. I don't know who it was. There's so many amazing decoders out there that I'm involved in. But there it is. Father is a 58 in the English. What about the mother? Well, folks, there it is. I mean, if you know what the 137 is, well, congratulations. I mean, it does equal the number 11, which is the number of magic. It's the number of alternating current and electricity and the Elohim. 137 is the 33rd prime number. And there it is, male, female. And I mean, you know, look at this. Here's your mother. Mother's gold. So, you know, that, that's on that level. You can decode that as well. There's gold right there. Mother's gold. So what about the Chaldean, folks? The breakdown of the Chaldean of father, mother, which came from Christopher Columbus, who's running man. Because we got to have a mother and father other than the physical mother and father you and I have. What about the ones that are using us? Well, through the Chaldean, father's 25, mother's 27. That's a total of 52. When we bring in that alchemical elements, it's father would be manganese and the mother would be cobalt, which is chaos and order, the CO. I mean, it's interesting because manganese and cobalt is a direct match of mother, father, 52, right there. And then what about the string of pine? What about the string of pi? Well, folks, if you take 58 and 52, on 58 and 54, just the masculine side, you're going to get the number 112. If you add them up, combining mother and father, you're going to get 112. You'll get 113, but the other one outlook is 112. Look at where it appears. 112 appears at the 709th decimal digit of pi, folks. That is the element gold. Once again, is the element gold. That's mother, father. Mother, father is gold. And you know, alchemy is turning lead into gold, going back to the mother, father. We're almost finished with this presentation, folks. What about the alchemology of Christopher Columbus? If you've been following my research, you know, you know, I, I decoded, I've decoded so many people, but you know, Keanu Reeves, why he was Neo in the movie Neo, because his name is linked to Neodymium. No accidents, folks. Man's being used. Christopher Columbus is no exception. Look at this. His full name is Gold, which is Mother Father in the string of pie. Individually, all his letters, all night, and of course, remember, it's 19 letters, 19. The word battery equals the number 19, and the mirror of that is the 91, which that is equaling it in the English ordinal. But his 19 letters, we then take them and move them through into the elements of the periodic table. This is called alchemology. Numerology and alchemy tied together. And when you take all these elements, all 19 of them, tied to his 19 letters, and you add them up using the trusty calculator. I couldn't even fit them all here, but you can go ahead and fact check this, which I encourage you to do. The total you're going to get is 167.149. That's what Christopher Columbus's alchemology comes out to. What is that tied to? Well, folks, he's got two prime numbers. Now, if you don't know what a prime number is, please pause this video and go Google it. Because they're big deal numbers. Big deal numbers. They're standalone numbers. But please go research it if you don't know what it is. Get a good grasp of it. This is numberempire.com, this website that I use. Notice, you know, 167.149 is Christopher Columbus's alchemology. 167 is the 39th prime number and then 149 on the feminine side is the 35th prime number they're both prime numbers 
And then we bring in the elements of the periodic table once again. 39 is yttrium. The Y, the Yod, the 88 miles an hour Marty McFly and the DeLorean and Back to the Future. 39 means lower mind and a higher mind in astrology, in numerology, and then bromine. There's the gold again. See, that's 79. Bromine only has one weight, as does yttrium. 79 is gold. So what happens when we bring these two together, folks? Let's go a little step further. Well, there it is. We add them up using the trusty calculator. Here are the two weights, yttrium bromine tied to Christopher Columbus. It totals 168.81. 168 on the masculine side ends up matching up to the 69th element on the periodic table, thulium. And the reason why, folks, this is the yin yang. This is the yin yang. The black and the white itself. And remember, folks, Christopher Columbus discovered land in the Tropic of Cancer. Above the equator, the Tropic of Cancer. What is Cancer's astrological symbol it's this that's cancer's symbol and this guy's alchemology is tied to it folks how do you as i say how do you wrap your how do you wrap your mind around this see folks man's we're being used okay and, and as soon as you can kind of Allow that to come into your presence and really ponder it. The sooner you're going to start getting more downloads. But you see, folks, if you think that man's still doing things, especially now, maybe, okay, I can't prove that you're being used. But do you see this whole presentation shows you quite clearly using multiple layers that man's not doing anything when it comes to these big world stage events. They're not doing anything. And the only logical conclusion that I can come to is we live, we live in a battery, but we live in a software that was written long before each and every one of us got here, which is, you know, you study theology. Why is the Bible and all the prophecies coming true? Well, because it is written in the software. And the story gets strengthened when, pe when people read it and prophesy with it. It's the most popular book in the world, always has been. And that's the story being portrayed. But here's history. People, this is what I studied when I was in high school. I graduated in 91. I read about Christopher Columbus. Is it true? It doesn't matter if it was really true. What matters is the story is embedded into the matrix and it has a ton of merit and a ton of power because of the numbers and what's written into the software of this video game that we're playing. We're, we're, we're playing out a video game, folks. That's the only way to logically describe all of this. So anyway, what is it that you saw during this presentation? I, I could have went so much deeper with this. Could have spent way more time on this. Maybe it was something you saw that I didn't see, but folks, what, do you, what did you see during this presentation? What's your take on it? What's your take on it? So that's all I got for today, folks. My name is Logan. This is Decoder Reality. Thank you so very much for watching.